I'm going to tell you about my eight stage plan uh, for revision. It's one that I've, that I've given out to students previously. It's one that is based on, on, on research that's been conducted and also on experiences of students that I've taught. It's had, in some cases, quite a dramatic effect. Uh, one of my students, for example, who followed it very, very closely, went from a D to an, to an A in a relatively short space of time. The first step is to ensure that your notes are complete. So you should aim to do this well ahead of time. You need to make sure that if you've missed any lessons, if you've missed any problem sheets or things like that, uh, any homeworks, you collect them all together. You get them from friends or you go and see your teacher. The second step is to then take those notes and read them through while trying to understand them. I think the main advice I'd give is to make the whole process as active as possible. So if you're reading, don't just read passively, but make sure that you're taking notes at the same time, that you're noting down things that you want to return to later, you're rephrasing things in your own words, and you're noting down things that maybe you haven't understood the first time. Make sure that you understand everything in those notes. The way to check that is to redo your, some of your homeworks, some of your assessed works and check that you really understand what's happening and then you could get full marks on them if you resubmitted them now. It's also important to look for alternative perspectives on the course and it may well be that you don't understand your teacher's explanations, you don't like their way of explaining things or you have problems with the way of explaining things of the set textbook. But there are any number of textbooks at the same kind of level. You have to check that everything lines up with your syllabus. But it's definitely worth getting a different tail level physics textbook, a different tail level maths textbook or looking at online resources. So an example of that will be mathcentre.co.uk which is text-based, and a video-based resource is Khan Academy, which will explain things at the right kind of level, particularly for the second year of A-level maths. Once you've done that, you need to leave space. So one of the themes that runs through this, this method is that, is that you, you work quite intensely for a period and then you have a break. And that break is of one or two or sometimes three days. So that allows your brain to absorb the information that you've forced into it. Those problem sets that you, that you collected, those homeworks, what you should then do is star some of them uh, because they're particularly meaningful. Either they were ones you found difficult or they were ones that you think are particularly important for the exam. And then the summarizing begins. So this summarizing should be active. You should go through your notes now that you understand everything in them and you should try and write a condensed form of those notes. Leave out the things that you feel you already know and that you know well. Also leave out any things that you think aren't particularly relevant. Because you have made sure that you understand everything, this condensed set of notes will be a very good overview of the subject. I think it's also important to take breaks and to plan those breaks as well. Because if you think about being in a normal lesson, you start with concentration being quite high, then it tends to fall during the course of the lesson. And when you get towards the end of the lesson and you realize that things have to be finished, then your concentration starts to pick up again. And then you use these condensed set of notes to revise. Now, while you're writing those notes, you should also, at the same time, write yourself some questions. These should be different to the, to the problem sheet questions that you start. So for example, in mathematics, there are a lot of definitions. Uh, it's not possible to know um, how to integrate e to the x times sine x with respect to x if you don't know what an integral is. So you should make your quiz questions sort of questions about definitions or questions about things that are particularly fundamental. At the end of this section, you should have a condensed set of notes, maybe uh, eight sides of A4, and another set of, of maybe even a hundred quiz questions. Okay, so once you've done this, your brain's absorbed a huge amount of mathematical information. And so what you need to do is take a break, maybe a day, maybe two days, and let yourself absorb it. Then when you come back to it, what you're going to do is you're going to re-engage with the material, but this time in a way in which you're being tested. This sort of micro-testing has been shown to be very, very effective for, for learning things. So you go back through your condensed set of notes and you try and check whether you can remember them. So for example, if there's a definition, perhaps the derivative of a trigonometric function, then you would try and check that you really could remember what that was before you fully reveal uh, in your notes what it was you'd written down. And so what you're trying to do is you're not just, you're not just reading these, this summarized material, you're also trying to engage with it. 
testing yourself. Um, at the same time, you should then also work through your quiz questions. So good question, quiz questions might be, uh, what's the derivative of the cosine of x? What's the derivative of cosine of x squared? Things like this. What's the product rule? All the time what you're doing is you're, you're, you're helping your brain memorize these things by, by engaging with the material. It's very different to just sitting there and passively reading it um, while listening to music or with the TV on in the background. Okay, now it's time for step five. That's where you redo your starred assignments, but this time without your notes in front of you. So you don't have your condensed notes, and you don't have your notes from class. And you just go back through those starred assignments, those ones that you thought were important, and you try and do them without looking. If you want, you can also incorporate some of the quiz questions into there as well. The point here is that you're again testing your knowledge of the material uh, and forcing yourself to engage with it over and over again. Again, you leave a gap of a day or two, and then it's time for step six, which is the reversal step. So in step six, you work back through your condensed notes, and you work back through your quiz questions, but you do it backwards. So again, what you're trying to do when you're going through your revision notes is just partially reveal each line and see if your brain can, can complete, right? So for example, you might reveal the binomial theorem is and then keep the rest covered and actually check whether you can remember what the binomial theorem is. What you're trying to do here is stop your brain remembering things sequentially. Brains are very, very good at, at remembering these things in sequence and you need to check whether you can remember them out of sequence because that's what you're gonna have to do in an exam. Again, time for another pause, probably a day or two. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go back through everything and you're going to keep repeating the, the previous steps until you have complete mastery over your, um, your condensed notes, your quiz questions and your starred questions. Once you feel ready, then it's time to move on to the next stage, which is step seven. Okay, now it's time for step seven. Step seven is the most important step. What you need to do is get copies of previous exams and sit them under exam conditions. No notes, no uh, taking a break or having a cup of tea. Pretend you're, sat in an, you're sitting in an exam. Then you need to mark your exam. If you don't know or trust yourself to mark it, then get a teacher or a friend to mark it. What you want is very critical feedback. So the point of step seven is to really check that you have learned what you think you've learned and what you need to have learned. Because what you may have done is have focused on things that don't crop up that much in exams or you may have focused on things um, with perhaps a slightly different perspective than the examiners want. Once you've sat two or three exams and you have a good idea of, of what you know and what you don't know, then you need to go back and repeat all those previous steps, but focusing only on those areas that you didn't do well. So this is what I like to think of as, as step eight. This is the focused final step where you go back through and ignore those things that you did well at and only focus on those things you did badly at. Okay, and then the final thing is that you want to test yourself again. So uh, get hold of another exam paper if you've run out of exam papers, that's not a problem. Weirdly, your brain will have forgotten how to do some of the previous questions. So you can chop out questions from previous exams and make your own exam paper. Sit that exam, again under timed conditions, again mark it, and what you'll hopefully find is that you really do know everything now. Um, this is the time to tidy up any loose ends, um, and this, you should hopefully have timed this so that you're about two or three days before the exam at this point. If you've peaked too early and you have a bit of a gap between now and the exam, then you probably want to do another read through of your notes, another read through of the quiz questions, and perhaps another timed exam, finishing a couple of days before the exam. Give yourself a day off before the exam, and then go in and hopefully get an A. And I just want to say, I hope you do very well in your exams. There's no point in wishing you luck. If you follow these steps, you don't need luck because what you'll have is complete mastery of your subject. So yeah, I hope they go well. <laughs>